here we are. Yes. <laughs> okay. You know, every grown man ought to have a pair of bongos. Yes, it's true. I mean, especially we, nowadays. <laughs> especially nowadays. Mm -hmm. I think it would be uh, mm -hmm. very meditative and uh, mm -hmm. uh, whatever and whatever. Mm. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Yesterday, mm -hmm. at the conclusion, uh, at the conclusion of uh, our thing, I made the salacious suggestion that you might be uh, behind the uh, camera in uh, your all together in the news. And, well, you're getting together. Yes, I'm getting ahead. Go ahead. Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. What are you going to say now? I was, I was going to say that I was wrong that you were all together in the news. You only had on your on your underwear. Your nose is going to grow, Pinocchio. Well, actually, you had on everything, but, <laughs> you know, uh, it, it's, it's just a little prank. I won't do it again. Oh, yes. I your nose is growing. I, I, I won't do on it. On with the reading on. of the snake doctor. The snake doctor. Okay. I won't do it again. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yesterday it was uh, chapter 5 and 6. Yes, please. Today is going to be uh, 7 and 8. Would you These, uh, show us the cover, please? Short chapters. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it carries the story along. Uh, the cover uh, is? The Snake Doctor. Yes, all right. Uh, please. Zippy do Doodle. Yeah, zoom in to the Snake Doctor. Yes. There we go. Yes. Got it. All right. Thank you very much. Here we go. <laughs> this is a letter that comes from... He's back in the States now mm -hmm. with uh, the lady he's going to be married with to Akuzwa, who has agreed. Mm -hmm. mm. So, now he can begin to... Uh, meet the obligations, the contractual agreement he made with Asiapo okay. to get this money that yes. he's going to need mm -hmm. to do his, his breakout film. Yes. Uh, the girlfriend writes, Dear Kojo, just a note, I know you're probably up to your neck with projects, things to do. More power to you, brother. Ghana hasn't been the same since you left. Mm. I'm saying that for many reasons. The main one being the fact that I missed you a great deal. That may come as a big surprise from someone who is supposed to have uh, a stiff, uh, an upper lip as stiff as mine. Mm -hmm. But I remember that we agreed to be completely honest in our communication with each other, onward. My office staff has shown a great appreciation of my presence since your departure. Smile. <laughs> and life in Ghana here continues. I hope you had a pleasant trip back and that you remember to drop me a few lines whenever you have the time. Love, faithfully yours, Grace. Uh -huh. P.S. Went to visit my Auntie Eugenia and Chito last weekend and she told me to remind you to, to beware, to be careful. Mm -hmm. It all sounds rather mysterious to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Kojo folded the letter in half unfolded it and stared at the gracefully slanting curves of Grace's handwriting. Mm -hmm. Dear, dear Grace. Mm -hmm. And then tore the letter into small pieces. We can communicate, but there's no need to keep the communications. <laughs> the car was loaded with the bad necessities, a few sandwiches, water, changes of clothes, shoes, a lot of people trip off to Mexico like they're on a safari through the Sahara. Whatever we don't have, we can buy in route. I'm in your corner, Kojo, all the way. San Bernardino, straight through the Imperial Valley, kicking off into Yuma, Arizona for the first leg. Arizona sprawled in front of them, a sunstruck city on an adobe platter. They were going to cross over to Nogales, Mexico from Nogales, Arizona. The air was blast furnace dry, the blue sky with flecks of clouds, the road clear for fast driving. I'm glad we left in the morning. Mm. The evening traffic makes me feel mentally ill at times. 
Yeah, I know the feeling. Hmm. They travel without making unnecessary commentary, a casual point at some unusual rock formation. Or a full fledged hey, look at that, look at that. A coyote chased a rabbit across the highway at twilight. Mm -hmm. Kojo, the first driver, announced, Time to chill, we've done a good day's journey. Where in the world are we? This is a fantastic little place called Gila Bend. Mm. Gila, the little, the little monster. What do you call it? Gila? Yeah. Gila. Yeah. Gila. Mm -hmm. The Gila Bend Motel was mm. desert, dressed, dusty, but clean, and they had showers in each cabin. Just put them in a week ago. Enjoy your stay, folks. Mm -hmm. They showered, changed clothes, and strolled out into the desert directly behind the motel. Oh, Kojo, you know this is the first time we've traveled together. What about that weekend in Morro Bay? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> where we went to breakfast, back to bed, lunch, back to bed, dinner, and back to bed for a whole weekend? <laughs> <laughs> I guess you wouldn't call that real traveling, would you? <laughs> the distinct howl of a wolf, or was it a coyote, startled them. Akusa pressed a little closer to his side. You gotta forget that there's still wild things in the world. Mm -hmm. Why do we go back to the hotel? Mm -hmm. Scared? Mm -hmm. Not at all. I just feel here to tell you a bedtime story. Mm -hmm. The morning cool desert air whispered into the open windows of the car. Kojo didn't like air conditioning. It made him feel like he was living in an artificial environment. Mm -hmm. Akusa was driving, looking cool and glamorous behind her big black shades. Ah. A right turn at Tucson and southward to Nogales. They hadn't talked about Kojo's film idea or the outline for Kuzwa's next book. They just felt the urge to drift along 65 miles per hour, gradually shaking out the frenzied temple of the city they had left the day before. Kojo studied Kuzwa's aristocratic profile. Mm -hmm. Thank God, I love this woman. It would really be a drag to have to marry someone you didn't love. Mm -hmm. Nogales, straight ahead, and then the other side. Akuzwa dealt with the customs people in the academic Spanish. Okay, Senor Brown, we can drive into Mexico now. No, yeah, that didn't take long. A little honest corruption goes a long way. The mordida, the little bite, is supposed to be passe, but no one seems to be willing to refuse a $20 gift. Mm -hmm. That gentleman over there, the one with the cigar and the pregnant looking tummy, is a professional fixer. Mm -hmm. We have insurance coverage, which means practically nothing, <laughs> visitor permits, and the whole enchilada. Boss! I'm impressed, my lady. But like I said, a little honest corruption goes a long way. The great Sonoran Desert opened up in front of them, Highway 15, hot, dry, and windless. Wow! Coming through Arizona is like heading into the mouth of the furnace. This is the furnace. You got that right. We have to go through here for a stretch before we get over to the ocean of Guanas. Miles of sandy earth, relieved by splash splotches of desert blooms and other more unbelievable sights. Kojo, did you see those children? Where can they possibly be going out here? He stopped the car and backed up a couple hundred yards. Four boys and three girls, the oldest about ten years old. The children stared at the couple in the car. Akuzo, I asked them if, if they could give him a lift. She was certain that Queres Ustedes Un Viaje conveyed the proper message. But their gestures were unmistakable. The children smiled shyly. And the oldest boy pointed his finger at a distant point and said, No, gracias. Kojo offered them small bottles of water, but they would only accept one. Uh -huh. Gracias, the spokesman said, and tipped the brim of his small sombrero. Mm -hmm. De nada. Akuzwa responded as he slowly geared up again. Where do you think they were going? Where do you think they were coming from? That's the big, <laughs> the big question. Mm. Ah, the sea. I feel like an ancient explorer or something. Look at that beautiful water. Mm. 
Mm. Yeah, Guamas. After all that desert, they may catch twenty-two down here. That uh, that mad think piece with the crazy guy. What was his name? Uh, Alan Arkin. Mm. Alan Arkin. Gojo drove up and down a few of the main streets to give a Kuzwa feel to the place. Hasn't changed much since I was here last years ago. A little more touristy than it was. Let's hope they have a vacancy in Lamar. 102, Lamar. They showered in water that had been funneled from the ocean on the back patio. Mm. Now that's what we call a salty bath. Oh, cool. <laughs> Shall we dress for dinner? But of course. <laughs> they had the Lamar dining room to themselves, dressed in their wrinkled but spotless white outfits. Wachinango a la Vera Cruzana for two, por favor. Si, senor. Kojo, I thought you didn't, you couldn't speak Spanish. I know how to ask for fish in about six languages. <laughs> the large, firm, fleshed fish drizzled with succulently fried onions, pimentos, olives, and dill tasted though it had been plucked out of the sea minutes before. Mmm. I've forgotten what fresh fish tastes like. Mm. Fried red snapper, chilled bottles of Carta Blanca. Mm. They strolled out onto the pier in front of the hotel after dinner, raking in the sight of the precision diving pelicans, the far-flung twinkling of distant stars. He stood behind her, his arm circling her waist, nuzzling her neck. I cool. I love you, do you know that? Mm -hmm. She made a slow, mm -hmm. wordless turn, held his face in her hands, and kissed him. Yeah. Wish well, she didn't kiss like that. <laughs> they sang old songs driving south mm -hmm. a few miles from the seacoast. They paused to have finger-sized tacos and cold bottles of makli suma mm -hmm. in towns that seemed too small to have a name. They have some beers in Mexico that are incredible. Mm -hmm. What do they call this place? If they called it anything other than this place, it would, it would be too much. <laughs> Kojo was delighted to discover a sense of humor in Akuzwa uh, that he hadn't been exposed to before. It was dry and sharp, but not acidic. Mm. It's too bad more of our people don't travel in Mexico the way we're traveling. They might not miss the concrete slave ships as much as they think. Mm. Akuzwa admired Kojo's way of coping. Mm -hmm. There was always a positive spin happening. We're stranded in the middle of nowhere, no problem. Help will be arriving soon. Mm -hmm. The car won't start. It must be hungry for affection. My dad has always preached has always preached that nothing is a real problem if your mindset can find the proper frequency. What's our destination or do we have one? Interesting that you should ask that. I wanted to surprise you by just coming to a dead stop in a town called Guadabampo. Guadabampo, mm. sounds like a beautiful destination. Guadabampo, population, a few thousands, Toltec and Spanish spoken. Mm. <laughs> people forget their populations in Mexico, people speak, still speak in Mishkek. Mm -hmm. Anything but Spanish, second. Mm -hmm. They drove slowly through the downtown area, circled the miniature, circled the miniature plaza, and two of the town's ten policemen mm -hmm. smiled and waved at them going the wrong way on a one-way street. <laughs> that the, was nice. The water bomb nice. hotel. <laughs> that was nice. Turistas. Ah yes, yes. Let them stay. The water bomb hotel on the curb beat curved gently for two miles. It was mid-morning when they arrived, and there was no sign of a desk clerk to register them. Kojo signed them in, took the key for number six, and they unloaded. Eventually, someone will show up to collect our money. You can count on it. They quickly changed his shorts and t-shirts to stroll along the beach. <laughs> the water the water that lapped at their ankles was warm as blood and filled with shrimps. Mm -hmm. Porpoises and Portuguese men of war, mm -hmm. large and small manta rays, and millions of brilliantly colored fish. They sat in the low tide shallows, gazing out 
onto a horizon that was so blue it looked like a painting. Mm -hmm. I close, I want you to help me put a script together. I thought you'd never ask. Mm -hmm. It was the beginning of creative series. They both felt it. I don't want it to interfere with your work. It won't. And I think the dividends will be well worth the effort. Good. Here's what I have in mind. I'm calling it a silent film, but it won't be silent in the old-fashioned way. The tentative title is My Grandfather's Eyes. Mm. Mm. I like that. You've spoken about it. Mm -hmm. I haven't worked the complete story out in my head yet, but I know what some of the elements would be. I want African-American satire. The stuff we let in some of the old, uh, the stuff we, we find in some of the old blues singers, serious realism, our story, not his story. Mm -hmm. Edutainment, a cross-section look at what we're about, what we've accomplished. I want to peel back some layers and take a look at some stuff that hadn't been considered before. Mm -hmm. When I say it won't be silent film in the old-fashioned sense of the word, that doesn't mean we won't be using subtitles, transitional music, stuff like that. The problem I'm concerned about is that what kind of main story and sub-story will be strong enough to hold the piece together? I can see the problem. Let me think on it. Camarones! 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 Mm -hmm. The sight and sound is a little gray-haired man with a huge sack of draped across his back, startling him. Whoa, where'd he come from? Mm -hmm. This is Mexico, lady. Wherever there's a customer, you'll have someone selling something. Mm -hmm. They bought a pound of the finger-sized shrimp for two dollars. The vendor explained that they could, they would go well with cerezas frias. <laughs> of course, he's right. I'm going to run in town for a minute to pick up some beer and a few other items. Want anything else? Sounds like we're going to need some notepads and a few more ballpoints. Be back in a, in a bit. She watched him jog away feeling suddenly lonely on this gorgeous foreign beach. Mm -hmm. We haven't been out of each other's sight in days. Maybe he felt the urge to be alone for a little while. She strolled, nibbled on a few shrimp and thought about the proposed script. My grandfather's eyes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can get into that. You can take a serious look at perspectives that most American movies ignore, have ignored. Even now, whenever the older African Americans in movies, they're either treated like antiques or off-brand jokes. Jokes. I can see ways to bring in the African American woman's point of view. Well, one of them anyway. <laughs> he talks about the silent film era and how it demonized black men. We weren't even thought of mm -hmm. way back then. After an hour of serious thinking and digging her toes into the warm sand, she strolled back to number six. Mm -hmm. Mr. and Mrs. Fernand Chavez and their six stair step children greeted her as she walked into the cozy little lobby of the Water Mampito Hotel. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Senora. Welcome. We were not here to greet you and your husband. We were attending a birthday party for my sister in town. Please, whatever you desire. Please call upon us. This is my wife Anna, my son Juan, my son Felipe, my daughter Calarta, my daughter Juanita, my son Jose, <laughs> and my latest daughter Carmen. My name is Ferdinand Chavez. You'd almost forgot. Right, yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they yeah, do. Okay. She liked them. The wife was Mexican rural woman, shy. Mm. The man was macho, proud of himself, and the children resembled brown eyed cherubs. Mm -hmm. They stared into her mouth as though she had released a stream of gold when she greeted them in Spanish. The gringa speaks our language. Uh, your husband, he also speaks Spanish? Only when necessary. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. you return an hour later, a six pack of Pacifico beer in hand, looking amused and distracted. Akuzawa introduced him to the Chavez family. The ministry is over, everyone melted into their own niche. The children went up and down the beach, capturing crabs and doing the simple things that children do. Mm -hmm. Papa Ferdinand dozed away in a hammock, and Mama Chavez assembled a collection of spices that drifted through the small hotel like a seductive perfume. Mm -hmm. oh. The beer was cold, and the shrimps were warm and crunchy, a perfect for its course. I don't know what the sister is cooking, mm -hmm. but I think I'm going to eat seconds of it. <laughs> They sprawled in the deck chairs on the veranda of the hotel, the sole tenants. Mm. 
notepads at the ready, enjoying the lust of our of the afternoon. Mm -hmm. What took you so long, Kojo? I thought they deported you or something. Mm -hmm. She detected an elf and mis mm -hmm. mischievous gleam in his eyes. Mm -hmm. just, just trying to find the coldest beer in town, that's all. Mm -hmm. An hour later, the younger Chavez came to tug gently at Kojo's fan, whispering, Ahora, la cena. I think she's telling me that dinner is ready. They raced to their room for a change of t-shirts. As good as it smells, it's got to deserve a change of t-shirts. The five table sized dining room on the enclosed patio was open to them. Papa Ferdinand wished them buen provecho on his way to the beach with a long bamboo fishing rod. And as soon as they were seated, Mama Chavez marched in with a beautifully painted clay pot brimming with seafood. What does this cost, senora? It is called Sopa de Guadabampito, she answered probably. Steak firm cutlets of red snapper, paper thin slices of squid, mm. chunks of turtle meat, stewed tomatoes, olives, onions, shrimps, small corn tortillas, and chilled bottles of Pacifico. Oh. Kojo. Mm. Mm -hmm. You ever tasted anything this good in your whole life? Mm -mm. Only one thing. He replied, dear pan. The stew soup was served in soup bowls, and the small tortillas were placed as soon as the stack was decimated. They sipped the cold beer, washing down the stew soup, and bit chunks from their tortillas. Mama Chavez peeked into the patio dining room from time to time to make certain they were enjoying their food. <laughs> Her food. Mm -hmm. She was not disappointed. Forty-five minutes later, they sent Ridley to drum tight bellies and sat smiling at each other, satiated. Mm. Of course, how do you say, that was a hell of a meal. Gracias, senora, un buen provecho. Gracias, senora, un buen provecho. Mm -hmm. The Chavez children cleared their bowls from the table as they walked out of the patio. God, you let's take a little walk. Good idea. Mm -hmm. The skylights at twilight were rainbowing a collage of purples, blood reds, oranges, blues, and umber. They strolled on the beach, their arms linked around each other's waist. I want to get something of this in our first film, this sense of, of the romantic that we're never given credit for having. It's always about hump, thump, sex, next with us, according to the usual suspects. You're right. I'd love to see this kind of scene in an African-American film. Mm. They passed Sir Ferdinand Chavez casting his line far into the waves. He held up two large red snappers for them to admire. Un buen provecho! Kojo called out to him. And Papa Chavez laughed. A soft, blooming night, the gentle lapping of the Gold Coast water against the beach followed them back to the sanctuary. The, lamp, the lamps in their room were dim, but serviceable. How about the ending of the film? How do you see that? I see the ending at the beginning, as the beginning. They were beginning to work out uh, an intellectual shorthand, the result of imaginative minds and sink. Hmm. Kojo was going to supply the bulk of the substance, and Akuzo was going to add to that, as well as helping to create the form. They hmm. exchanged ideas and made future plans before drifting into dreamless sleeps. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Chapter 8. Hmm. I close, I close. Wake up, wake up. <laughs> what? What's wrong? It's almost nine o'clock. She gave him a curious look and snuggled back under the sheet. What's with this man? Doesn't he know we're on vacation? <laughs> Kojo shook her gently by the shoulder and kissed her on her right ear. I close what so you got. Please wake up. I need your help with something. She responded just as he knew she would. What is it, baby? Come on, I can tell you on the way to town. A puzzled frown furrowed her forehead, watching him dash into the shower. What's going on here? She popped into the shower just as he was toweling off, a half dozen questions on the tip of her tongue. Akuzo, oh, don't worry, I'll answer all your questions. Just hurry up, please. He laid her pearl white skirt and pink embroidered long sleeve sheer blouse across the, across the bed. 
I, I didn't know what color panties you were planning to wear today. Mm -hmm. Golf breeze <laughs> and the inland desert wind splashing her face pushed her into a fully awake state. Kojo was driving a little faster than usual. He wants me to help him do something. Oh, probably something having to do with Spanish. But what's the rush? He slipped into a parking space in front of the most imposing building in Guadabampo, the city hall. What? He checked his watch for the tenth time. Great, we're on time, got five minutes to spare. He held her hand tightly as they dashed up the five steps into the city hall. He seemed to relax once they were inside the building. He pointed to a door at the end of the corridor, the mayor's office. She could see the outlines of a number of people through the opaque glass as they approached the door. He opened the door and an animated group of people burst into smiles and applause. Kojo, she, she spoke in a small voice. What is this? He held both of her hands and stared into her eyes. If you consent to be my wife this morning, the mayor is going to say the words and these other gentlemen are going to mariachi us down the street to the Floridita Cafe for a wedding breakfast with champagne. Ah. Akuzo burst into tears. Ah. Does that mean yes? <laughs> yes. After the binding words, it's a bonding kiss, a discreet distribution of pesos to the mayor and the mariachis, they floated out of the office with a license that certified they were now husband and wife. We'll have a, a, a good U.S. validation on this, whatever. So far as I'm concerned, I am now Mrs. Akuzawa Ferguson Brown. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Five doors away from City Hall, they entered La Floridita Cafe. The owner, golden-skinned, plump woman with thickly coiled braids, smiled into a corner table where two bottles of Piper Heights mm -hmm. were sticking out of a zinc bucket covered with chunks of ice. The breakfast is now, Senor Co. Si, Senor, now. A Kuzo kept dabbling at her eyes, trying not to cry. Kuzo, when did you hear all this? Yesterday when I came to get the beer. <laughs> but, but that, I mean, your Spanish, my Spanish is below average. But this makes the difference. <laughs> you held a thick wad of pesos under the table. She smiled. Mm. Yeah, I guess you got a point. Huevos rancheros, reefer had beans, and cream spinach. I had to convince the lady uh, we didn't want the chorizo, the sausage. She had a problem with that for a few minutes. The spinach is delicious with the eggs and beans. Customers wandered in and out, were informed the reasons for the celebration at the corner table, and smiled in their direction. Mm. Midway into the second bottle of Piper Heights, Kojo, mm -hmm. yeah. where did you find, where did you find Piper Heights it? In water, La Oh, yes. <laughs> the mayor's brother is Mr. Fixit in town, as you once said, a little unscorrupted goes a long way. Mm. An hour later, they made a shaky start from the curb, but level out just past a donkey loaded with bundles of hay. They drove slowly, carefully, feeding on each other's lives. Mm. Kojo, you just given me one of the most beautiful mornings of my life. Amen. Let's try to see if we can extend that throughout the rest of our lives. Ah. He stopped the car in the middle of the road to kiss her. <laughs> By the time they arrived at the hotel, Guadalajara, the Chavez clan had been informed via the small town gossip chisme system mm -hmm. that they had just been married. The Chavezes were obviously pleased with their guest <coughs> and with the fact that they were now in a room to an authentically married couple. Mrs. Chavez announced, I will bake a small cake for Mr. and Mrs. Cole. Gracias, <laughs> Yeah. Gracias, Senora. Mm -hmm. It was dawn and they had made the decision the night before to begin their day with a walk on the beach prior to beginning the drive back to Los Angeles. Mm. Of course, I see the film as almost a collage, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to be relatively silent. I've always been impressed by how well the Japanese, especially an African dudes like Simbang, for example, use silence in their films. The collage effect will give us a chance to weave in a number of themes. You ever listen to Indian music? Mm -hmm. I have with you. Well, 
Think about the big sound you get from the sitar and the sarog, and then all those sympathetic strings, the sound that shimmer. Mm. Exactly, shimmer is a damn good description. I see grandfather's eyes in that way. Sometimes think, I think dialogue, dialogue is overused in American movies because people need to hear some noise. Uh -huh. For example, if we were shooting this scene, I would want to hear natural sounds, the waves lapping at the beach, bird calls, the winds. I know it will make our jobs harder, but I'd like for you to keep that in mind when you start writing. Because the economy of word usage will entail a greater need for selectivity. He hugged out to his chest. I couldn't have said it better. I couldn't have said it better. <laughs> they meandered, paused to watch porpoises at play, to pick up interesting looking stones, mm -hmm. to envelop each other in wordless hugs. She held her ring up to the light. Yesterday, about this time, I was a Kuzawa Ferguson. Today, I'm a Kuzawa Ferguson Brown, your wife. And I feel very good about that. They made a gentle meditation turn and started back to the hotel, each of them loaded with thoughts. I have to break the news gently to mother and father. She'll pretend to be close to a heart attack, no matter what. <laughs> <coughs> I'll have to figure out a way to prevent my mom and dad from giving us a big celebration. It would be hard to make them understand that this trip to Mexico was another way for us to get to the drawing board. Now then, I've done the first thing, I've made the first step, but I didn't feel that I had done it as an obligation. I think I would have probably married a Kuzwa anyway, I think. Mm -hmm. Mama Chavez welcomed them with a fish roll and egg breakfast. We'd, <laughs> we'd be fat if we stayed down here longer than the week. Mm -hmm. After the breakfast and heartfelt handshakes with all of the Chavezes, it was time to head back to El Norte. Mm -hmm. Uh, Kuzwa took the wheel for a first lap. We got about four days to get back. Let's make every hour count. Guinness mm -hmm. came too soon. A late lunch at La Mar, a small nap on the beach. Koja, I hate to talk in cliches, but this whole thing seems like a dream. Mm -hmm. I was thinking that too. I think it's what we need from time to time. Reality can be sickening. Mm -hmm. I heard that. Mm -hmm. Ciudad Hermesillo gave them an opportunity to buy a small bucket to fill it with a bag of ice cubes and six cans of tecate. They popped open the ice beer, whizzing through the blast furnace heat of the sonora and desert. The glare of the sun and the dry heat kept them in a state of thirst. They stopped for more beer and ice, dumping the empty beer cans in a filling station trash can. I can think of a time when I would have thought that drinking a beer and driver was quite Gauche. Quite gauche. <laughs> my, my, Mrs. Ferguson Brown, what language? <laughs> Quite gauche, indeed. <laughs> They're a little bit tipsy. Yes. It was too hot to laugh. They simply smiled at each other. Yes, gauche. Mm -hmm. A perfectly legitimate way to say in French, wrong. Mm -hmm. Just goes to show you how relative things are. Ten minutes down the road in a gleaming sandy place speckled with hard scrub desert vegetation, Kojo tapped Akuzwa on the shoulder. Please pull over. The beer won't out. <laughs> you got to pee? Mm -hmm. Well, if you want to be gauche about it. <laughs> she slowed to a stop on the shoulder of Highway 15, stretched and got out to flex her legs. The moaning, the moaning of the motor was off, the desert air hot and dry. Kojo waved and walked 50 yards away from the road. <laughs> He smiled at himself, a bit tipsy from a full afternoon of ice beer drinking. Stupid how fastidious people can be. Why would I have to walk this far from the road from a Kuzwa to take a leak? The figure squatting in the shade of a barrel-haired cactus looked like a strange animal. The animal grew to full size as he walked closer. I see awful. She is a lovely girl. Hmm. Kojo nodded numbly. <coughs> yeah. Yes. It didn't seem possible that this half-naked man from Africa could be squatting in the middle of the desert 
speaking to him. No, no, there's no one here. I'm, I'm hallucinating. Kojo rubbed his eyes carefully to clear them for a closer look at the mirage 20, years in, 20, 20 yards in front of him. When he removed his hands from his eyes, Asiafa was gone. Yeah, just what I thought. Too much heat and beer. He urinated in the sand and turned to find Asiafo leaning against a scrubby little bush 20 yards away. You must now remember to feed the, guy, the visitor who will come. Kojo's mouth was dry, his tongue felt thick and heavy, and he was beginning to feel a headache. How will I know? You will know. It will come. It will come four times a year. Feed it, and things will go well. Kojo nodded, feeling drained of energy. Asiafo disappeared like a desert mirage. Kojo stood in place for a long moment, his eyes fixed on the place where the man had stood a moment before. He walked slowly to the spot and bent down to study the prints in the sand. The print was of a large snake. The weaving pattern was unmistakable. I was talking to the for a man right here, and now I'm looking at the print of a snake's body. He was here. He spoke to me. I spoke to him. Akuzawa was swabbing her face with a wet terry cloth towel when he got back to the car. Koji, how long did it take to pee? I thought you had been bitten by a snake or something. <laughs> nope, nope, nothing like that. Just a very full bladder. Here, let me share that towel with you. Mm -hmm. He got behind the wheel, joking with Akuzawa, pretending her humor he didn't really feel. He looked up into the rearview mirror as they pulled away to see. Asiafo standing in the middle of the road, offering him a military salute. <laughs> the evening breeze was a merciful hand fanning cool air on them. Kojo drove by instinct, his mind wandering from subject to subject, a half-naked man in the Ghanaian equatorial rainforest promises me that I will be able to make the films I want to make. The money will be there. Why does he do it? He says he's doing it because I asked him for help and he has the power. And I get on my horse and charge into the sunset, primed by the promise. The only thing I have to do is get married within three months. He smiled at a Kuzo's sleeping profile and feed a visitor four times a year. Four times a year for how long? Well, what the other difference does it make if I had to feed a stranger four times a year for four years? That would only be 16 meals. Hmm. Asiafo does have supernatural powers, no doubt about that. Anybody who can disappear, who can trip from continent to continent, must have some kind of power. He felt the urge to wake Akuzwa up, but vetoed the idea. No, no, no. This is between me and my patron. My patron, yeah. Mm. I guess that's the best description I could use. When the brothers and sisters come to this meeting in September, I'm going to lay something on them that will be so heavy that they'll want to stick with me to the bitter end. What makes, it, what makes me think of stuff like this? The scattered lights ahead indicated a town or a village was ahead. Kojo, a cool little whisper in his ear. Let's spend a night here. I was just about to whisper the same thing to you. Hmm. The Hotel California, hmm. two avenues east of the Panama restaurant. Mm -hmm. Offered them a shabby but clean second floor room with a shower to drip warm water only. Mm -hmm. Hotel California, there's an irony in here somewhere, mm -hmm. or maybe sarcasm. <laughs> a drippy shower, clean sheets, pillow talk. Kojo, we haven't talked about a lot of things. Let's talk. Well, we haven't talked about babies, children. I love them. <laughs> you mean that? You want to have babies? Only one at a time, please. Why do you ask that? because I flushed my birth control pills down the toilet yesterday morning. Okay. They put a working schedule together driving through Arizona. They also put a living pattern together at the same time. Well, the obvious move is to my place. I have the house. My lease has six months ago, but I'm sure my landlord would let me break it. They're really sweet people. I know I've met them. Okay, that'll work. 
But matter of fact, that's a good idea. It'll give me time to have a couple walls knocked out to give us more working space. Plans, 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 plans for script, for home life, careers, for future dinners, trips to Mexico again. A series of books stressing the need for everyone to understand Africanity, Afrocentricity. Mm -hmm. Coach, I didn't want to break the news to our parents. Well, for mine, it would be simple. I'll stick my head in the door and announce that we're now man and wife and run before they start having an all-family celebration. <laughs> of course, well, I look glum. I wish I could say it was going to be that way with my folks. I could almost hear the anguished screams from mother and my father grumbling betrayal of trust or something. Don't sweat it, I'm on your side. Don't look now, but we just passed the borderland into La La Land. Mm -hmm. The familiar landmarks and freeways begin to appear. Because there's just one important item we haven't discussed concerning the film. Where's the money coming from to set up an office, get the phones in, the office equipment, stuff like that? That's a big hurdle I have to jump over. Well, I got 38000 in savings and equity in the house. Oh, of course. I love you for even making the offer, but that's not the way. One of the things they taught us at USC that made lots of sense to me, never use your own money to finance a project unless you absolutely have to. Don't worry about the, the fuss. I got irons in the fire. She smiled at the confident thrust of his chin. My husband. Hmm. Bumper to bumper traffic Friday evening. Walking back to the parking lot. They had decided to give themselves a weekend to be together a little longer and map out the future without any interruption. Wouldn't it be wonderful if this weekend never ended? <laughs> we could try to keep it going as long as possible. Why don't you come over to my place? It'll keep you away from your mother's messages for a little while anyway. Mm -hmm. Sunday bloomed hot, sunny, and humid. Harvey Ferguson felt cool and collected. Starting from the front page of the Los Angeles Times, a little <laughs> comic strip. Harvey, dear, mm -hmm. aren't you going to put something on? They say they'd be here at 2. Minerva, it's only 11.30. Yes, I know, but do you want to make a good impression or don't you? Well, not two hours ahead of time. Oh, please, Harvey, don't be so snobbish. You're going to be seeing the parents of this young man that Akusua has fallen in love with. So what should I do, Minerva? Damn, a man can't even fish for the newspaper. Change it to something snazzy. Why don't you wear your blue blazer? It's a bit warm for that, don't you think? Perhaps. At any rate, we can't sit here in your golf shorts reading the newspaper expecting guests. And why not? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm with him. And why not? <laughs> Minerva, she's she getting on his nerves. I think so. <laughs> Minerva Ferguson cocked her head to one side, her serious listening posture. Harvey, maybe Harvey is going through a middle age crisis rebellion period. Mm -hmm. She made a mental note to monitor his behavior a little more closely. Mm -hmm. 1 55 in the afternoon. Hmm, punctual people, not a bad way to start off. The Browns strode up the Tree shaded driveway, laughing, exchanging goodbye laughter. Mrs. Minerva Ferguson cut them off at the pass. Welcome. You must be Mr. and Mrs. Brown. Kofi and Jingo Brown looked at each other with mock surprise. We must be. <laughs> and then they formally introduced themselves. Jingo Brown, Kofi Brown. Mm -hmm. I'm Minerva, and this is my husband, Harvey. They stood looking at each other awkwardly for a moment before shaking hands. Uh, uh, please, please, have a seat. Would you care for something? Tea, fruit juice, beer? Fruit juice sounds good. Dolores, they sat on the terrace veranda, the Fergusons looking uncomfortable, the Browns amused. Mm -hmm. Njinga, Kofi, those are names like the one my daughter has adopted. Njinga Brown and Kofi Brown exchanged rapid glances. Mm -hmm. Was this the Eurocentric world gone bananas or what? <laughs> <laughs> the car breaking in the driveway announced newlyweds. They rushed onto the veranda, kissing and hugging their parents. Sorry we're late, guys. No big fan. The Ferguses exchanged understanding eye codes. It's all right to be late. Mm. Fruit juice? 
I think I'd like to have something a little spicy. De uh, Dolores, Acuso called on. Ay, cervezas? Si, senora. Dolores had kept up with the trade of it and her limited English. Ay, dos botellas de Virginia, por favor. Mrs. Ferguson spotted the gold band on Acuso's ring finger, took a deep breath of air, and leaned back in her chair. There was something told theatrical about her motion that it focused attention on what she had noticed. Akuza decided not to play past the moment. Well, I guess we may as well come on out with it. It's why we asked you to get together here. Mother, father, mom, dad, Kojo, and I got married in Guadabampo, Mexico last week. The Browns embraced them and offered sincere congratulations. We knew you two were up to something. Minerva and Harvey Ferguson stared at each other, trying to figure out what to say and who should say it. This was the first elopement either of them could ever recall on either side of their family tree. Oh, my. <laughs> Harvey Ferguson finally cleared his throat. Ah, <coughs> Kuswa, uh, Kojo, we wish you two people all the happiness in the world. Okay. Uh, Kuswa hugged her mother, I mean, hugged her father, and stared a question mark at her mother. Mrs. Ferguson responded immediately, and I second that motion. Hmm. I knew I had made the right choice the minute I met your son. Where did you get married? In a little Mexican town called Guadabampo. Sounds so romantic. <laughs> this calls for celebration of some sort. Dolores, Papo boy. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Bring the two bottles of champagne here. They're in the really vegetable bin of the fridge. <laughs> si, senora. <laughs> Kojo and Akuzwa stared at her mother, shocked to see her reaction. So, now that we're all one big happy family, when do we get our first grandchild? Mm -hmm. Then Jingle Brown initiated the laughter and it became contagious. Kojo and Akuzwa laughed with relief. Their parents were joy. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the end of seven and eight. Wow. Uh, it's going on. It sure is. What an adventure. I, as you can see, I'm mm -hmm. trying to take mm -hmm. us out of the country as much, uh, much as possible. Mm -hmm. This is obviously uh, prior to the time, prior to the, 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 uh, the, well, the, the cartel takeover of Mex Southern Mexico. Right, right. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't, I can't imagine somebody just driving a Volkswagen down Highway 15 now without no, being no, uh, no. robbed or stuck up or whatever. That's so unfortunate. But it was a more instant time and make Sweeter it back time. to that. This is true. In, in any case, Guadabampo is a real place. Uh -huh. It's in an area, uh, they had a great baseball player who come, came from a town called Nova Hoa. Little, the little Indian towns, a whole bunch of them, uh -huh. if they're still there, they oh. probably have been, uh, uh, what do you call it, built up by now. Of course, yeah. But it's a beautiful place. Ah. Uh, I'm going to leave us there All right. for this evening. Well, the Snake Doctor can be purchased at Author House, Amazon, Barnes or Noble, and just go to your local bookstore and say, I want a copy of The Snake Doctor. The Bye. Snake's Doctor's photo, I might mention at this point, was taken by none other than the photographer herself, Zola Selena Hawkins, mm -hmm. in addition to the photo on the back of this mysterious man. <laughs> so he was there. <laughs> Definitely. I just thought I had to add that. Yes, your website is www.odiehawkins.com. If you've enjoyed these moments in time with Odie and Zola and these readings, Please like the page and subscribe. And with that, we shall see you tomorrow. Tomorrow. Same time. Namaste. Namaste. Oh, I like that. <laughs>